Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the credit for elderly and disabled. As the name of the credit suggests, it's designed to help elderly and disabled people with their income tax bill. The purpose behind introducing the credit for elderly and disabled individuals was to offer some tax incentive to those with low income who fall under these categories. To qualify for this credit, the person should be either 65 years or older or retired on the grounds of a permanent or complete disability as well as receiving, they have to be receiving, taxable disability income. So simply put, you're either old, over 65, that's what's considered old for the IRS, or you are disabled and receiving taxable disability income. Now bear in mind, there are specific limits on adjusted gross income and non-taxable social security income. As always, there is always limitation. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's take a look at the limitation. The highest permissible credit is 15% of the taxpayer base amount. What's the base amount? It's gonna, gonna vary with your filing status. Here are the base amount that are provided by the IRS. $5,000 for single individual, or if you are in married and one person is eligible. It means one person over 65 or one person is permanently disabled and receiving disability income. This amount is 7,500 if both individual, both spouses are eligible and married individual filing separately, the base amount is 3,750. So you're saying I will take the base amount times 15%. Yes, but we got to wait a little bit more. We have to deduct certain things from the base amount. So before computing the credit, we have to reduce the base amount by two factors. The first factor is the amount of non-taxable social security payment or any non-taxable payment. Simply put, what's going to happen is you will say, okay, I'm, my, I'm single. I have five, my base is 5,000. Then I have to deduct from that 5,000 any amount I receive in Social Security that's non taxable. Non taxable because Social Security sometime part of it is taxable, part of it is non taxable. I have to deduct the part that's non taxable. Then I also have to deduct from this amount 50% of my adjusted gross income that exceeds a certain number. For example, for single, I'll have to reduce my. I have to reduce the 5,000 by 50% of the amount that exceed 7,500 of my AGI. Don't worry, it's very simple computation. We're gonna do it on the next slide. There's a different number for if you are uh, married filing jointly, and there's a different number obviously for a for a return, for, for a married filing separately. So 10,000 for married filing jointly, and 5,000 for ma married filing separately. Let's take a look on the next slide to see an example to illustrate this simple computation. Let's take a look at this example. Bob and Karen file a joint return. Bob is 67, they qualify. Karen is 62, does not qualify, and we're not told that she's disabled. So only Bob meets the eligibility criteria. They have an adjusted gross income of 12,500 and received 750 of non-taxable social security benefit. So what's the base amount for them? They're mainly filing jointly, but one individual qualify it means the base amount is 5000 then we have to deduct from this amount the non taxable social security minus 750 then we have to deduct from this amount half of the excess of 10000 well 12500 the excess above 10000 is 2500 times 50% that's 1,250. Therefore, we have to deduct an additional 1,250, the half of the access of 10,000. Where does the 10,000 coming from? Well, just in case you're wondering, if you go back to the previous slide, you would see that for married individual, 
the 10,000 is deducted. Any amount in excess of that 10,000. What's left is 3,000. So notice the base started at 5,000. It ended up to be 3,000. Now we'll take the 3,000 times the rate of 15%. They will get a tax credit of 450. Now in reality, let me tell you something about this credit. Seldom elderly individual qualify for this. Why? Because elderly individual, they, if they, they don't make a lot of money and most of their social security is non-taxable. So what's going to happen, the non-taxable portion usually wipe out the base and they are left with no tax credit. This is in reality. FYI, we have to know it. This is how you compute this, this credit. What should you do now? As a, an accounting student, enrolled agent, CPA candidate, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional lectures, MCQs, true, false, resources that's going to help you with your accounting career with your accounting profession with your college career good luck study hard and of course stay safe